Hey everyone, Laura from Manny Parent Connection here. Today I'm going to talk about the top 10 questions I get from parents who are curious about working with a nanny. Question number six in my top 10 questions about working with a nanny is how do I pay my nanny? Do I pay my nanny over the table or under the table? Right answer there is you probably want to pay your nanny over the table because that is the legal way to do it. Many, many people do pay their nannies under the table, but that's not without its risks. We actually did a nice video blog about this a few weeks ago. Check that out in the description below. There's a link for that and you can learn more about what some of those risks are. It's worth mentioning that there is a lot that goes into paying your nanny illegally. If you're good with numbers, I particularly am not. They are just not my thing. We do have some talented parents out there who are number whizzes, maybe some accountants. Awesome. Set it up, do it, knock it out. If you have some time every couple of weeks to dedicate to payroll once you get things set up, go for it. There are lots of tools out there to help make that easier. I think QuickBooks is one. Lots of payroll softwares. But if it's not your thing, if you have a new baby in the house, maybe you're sleep deprived or you're going back to work and trying to figure out different schedules, you just don't have time, I definitely recommend handing off to a payroll company. Nanny Parent Connection has partnered with a fantastic payroll company. You can find that link for more information in the description below. You just fill out a form and it submits some information to them. They reach out and they can help you get all set up. It's really quick and easy. It saves the headaches of are my taxes being done correctly and it ensures everybody's getting paid correctly and getting paid on time. So check that out and my recommendation is pay your nanny the right way, pay them legally and maybe consider using a payroll company. Question number seven in my top 10 questions for working with a nanny is what are nanny taxes? Your nanny taxes are Social Security and Medicare. Together, those are called the FICA taxes. They can make up about 10% of your nanny's gross pay. That's definitely a chunk of change and there are some ways that you can offset that cost. There's the child and dependent care tax credit that you can write off at the end of the year when doing your taxes. If you have a dependent care account through your own employer, definitely take advantage of that. That will be a nice way to set aside some funds pre-tax in order to utilize those for child care. So check out some of those options. Just keep in mind when you're budgeting that the nanny taxes, they do make up about 10% of the nanny's gross pay. Question number eight in my top 10 questions about working with a nanny are, what are the most common job responsibilities for a nanny? So nannies, by definition, are in charge of everything surrounding the care and safety of the children. That can include help with baby's laundry or the kid's laundry. That can also include help with washing bottles, but that does not include things like the family laundry or weekly vacuuming, or I use the example of walking the dog or grocery shopping. Those things fall outside of the job description for typical nanny duties. So if you're adding in those things, and by the way, if you're getting care in your home, make it what you want. Just make sure you're compensating appropriately. So make sure that any of those types of job duties are listed in the contract, they're agreed upon, and you're compensating appropriately. So that's going to mean if you have things that are outside of just care of the children that you're probably going to pay two to three dollars per hour or more um, depending on the exact duties and the experience of your care provider. Who doesn't want meal prep done, right? <laughs> Sign me up. Just make sure you're compensating appropriately. Question number nine in my top 10 questions about working with a nanny is, can I ask my nanny to do household chores while the kids are sleeping? Yes, absolutely. But it's really, really important to recognize that nannying is a very unique job. Nannies are always on the go. There's always something to be done. They're not truly getting a lunch break when the kids are eating lunch, right? Because they might need to be feeding the baby or the toddler always is gonna want something, right? Um, they might spill something. They're just things, right? Kids always need things to be done. And so the nanny really, really doesn't get a chance to truly 
have a moment to unwind until the kids are napping. So just be cognizant of that, right? Make sure you tell your nanny, hey, you know, I recognize that this is a, a full on go, go, go type of job. And we appreciate that you give it your all. And we really, really want you to make sure that you're taking some time for you every day when there's nap time. But just make sure that your nanny is aware that you're thinking about her. You want her to feel well cared for and well recharged throughout her day. Um, not only is she going to appreciate that about you as a, an employer and appreciate that about her job, it's going to make her day a little bit better. She's going to return the favor by being the best nanny for your family. So just be aware, it's definitely okay to ask the nanny to do some tidying during the times where the kids are sleeping or having their quiet time. Maybe she uses that time to catch up with some dishes or tidying up the play area, things like that. But also just be aware that sometimes maybe she catches up on a personal phone call, just takes a breather, enjoys her lunch, or maybe recharges by reading you know, her book for a few minutes. Question number 10, my top 10 questions about working with a nanny is what are the standard benefits to offer a nanny? There are some industry standard benefits when working with nannies. So you're gonna to wanna to offer two weeks paid time off, guaranteed hours, and mileage reimbursement. You're also gonna to wanna to consider offering a healthcare stipend if your nanny is maybe more experienced, maybe you're having a hard time filling the role, that can be a really nice thing to offer to help attract more candidates to your position. Or if you just wanna make sure that you're making your nanny feel very well cared for and you're financially able to do so, that is a really, really great thing to offer. So I'm gonna walk through each of these and just give a little breakdown about what standard to offer. So for vacation, you're gonna to want to offer two weeks of paid vacation. Some families try to get one week of the nanny's choice, one week of the family's choice. If that's what you must do, you know, have that conversation with your nanny and find something that works for him or her. But also be aware that that's just not really the standard. A good question to think about is how would you feel if you at your corporate job were told when you could and couldn't take your vacation time? That wouldn't sit well with me and I'm guessing it probably wouldn't sit well with you either. So just be aware of what you're actually asking them to take their vacation at your choosing. So while that's really beneficial to you, that might not work really well for your nanny. So it is standard to offer your nanny two weeks paid time off of their own choosing. So just keep that in mind. If you have a very experienced nanny, they may even ask for more weeks of paid time off. And that's pretty typical. Guaranteed hours. This is really an important thing to offer. You're gonna to want to make sure you guarantee hours so that your nanny knows that they can count on a certain amount of income each week. So guaranteed hours will kick in if, for example, you take a vacation and you're gone for the week and you're taking the work with you, AKA the child or children, um, and the nanny is available to work, but because you're on vacation, she cannot work. So that's something to think about. You should still be paying your nanny and that's what we call guaranteed hours. This is also the same model if you had your child in preschool or daycare. You would pay for the month's tuition whether or not you were gonna be there the whole month. And that is so you reserve the spot at the daycare for your child. And so the spot is there when you're, you get back from your vacation. So it's a really great way to make your nanny feel well cared for. It's the right thing to do as an employer and everyone should be offering guaranteed hours. So for mileage reimbursement, you wanna offer your nanny the IRS standard rate, which for 2021 is 56 cents per miles driven. The IRS changes this every year, so it actually went down this year from last year. And this is for any miles driven in the nanny's car while on the job. So this has nothing to do with a commute to or from, this is only while on the job. So this could be anything from driving the children around to activities or school, to maybe running an errand for the family, um, anything like that, any on the job miles that your nanny is driving, those should be tracked and those should be reimbursed. Paid holidays. It's very standard for seven paid holidays to be offered. I've seen as few as five, I've seen as many as 13. There's a lot of flexibility here, but offering paid holidays is a really, really nice thing to add to the compensation package. It is an any industry standard and it's a good employer thing to do. For healthcare stipends, this isn't as standard, but I do see this being pretty standard for your more experienced nannies. So if you're looking to attract a more experienced nanny to your position, you may want to start out by offering a healthcare stipend. 
I've seen as little as $150 to $350 being pretty standard. And of course that can go up or down from that range. Offering a healthcare stipend for your nanny goes a long way to make your nanny feel well cared for. It can attract really top-notch applicants to your position and it's something to consider offering if you're financially able to do so. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Those are my top 10 questions I most frequently get asked about working with a nanny. I hope this information was helpful. I hope it paints a, a clearer picture of um, what kind of goes into working with a nanny for anybody who's considering working with a nanny and maybe hasn't before. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe to our channel so that you can get a heads up when more of our videos come out. That's it for today. Bye.